Hey, what's good? It's Rotten in, and uh, welcome back to another Street Fighter V video. This is going to be a bit different than what I've done in the past, in the sense that uh, it's going to be a little bit more selfish on my side. This is strictly for me to understand where I'm making mistakes at, uh, what I need to fix, what I need to go into training mode to fix, and if it helps other people on the way, then so be it. Uh, this is me unscrubifying my gameplay, basically. Uh, looking at any mistakes that I make, whether it's tiny and I still win the match, or if it's large and I get destroyed, I will be looking at everything. This first video is going to be a bit, probably a bit more familiar, more like my uh, previous videos that I've done where I analyze my matches. But the next one should be a bit more expansive because I'm going to focus on one match in particular, which is going to be uh, Bison, because I lose to Bison regularly <laughs> so that'll be the next video this first video i'm going to take some matches that i played from sets i'll also have the sets themselves uploaded separately so you can check those out uh see what happened in those sets see who won who lost spoiler alert i lost all of them uh and also just get a good general idea of what my play is at at that time uh, it'll take a little bit more time to put those sets up because they're actually quite large so we're talking hours of matches um, like I said, I just took a few of those to really sit down and analyze. We're going to do that from now on. Take a few of my matches from sets or from random play to sit down and analyze, look over, and really focus on like certain problems. I'll also try to incorporate cuts from uh, me and training mode solving those problems as well uh, when it comes to specific things. Again, not in this video particularly, but in the next one for sure. This is just to get a feel for it. So kind of figure this is like episode zero, if you will. Uh, but it's going to kind of be an ongoing series, probably for a long time if I can keep it going. They'll come out slower than most videos that I've done because they're going to take more time to sit up and create and get together and get the matches, etc. So if you're cool with that, I'm cool with it. Let's get into these matches. So here's a match I had with Lord William, and he's uh, playing Nash, which works out for me as well because I'm actually still learning Armika. And at this time, I really was on about day two of my Mika play. No, probably like day four, somewhere along, somewhere early. I know that much. <laughs> so um, I started playing Mika mainly to learn the matchup uh, from the other side because I've been getting blown by Mika a lot. I'm still having trouble against Mika, but uh, I've been getting better. But as it turned out, playing her also actually ended up having quite a bit of fun. Um, Right now, yeah, as you can see, I'm really trying to poke my way inside. Um, a problem I've already seen, well, first of all, I've jumped too many times already. <laughs> I shouldn't be jumping at all, um, or I should not be trying to jump very often. But a problem that I'm seeing in this matchup already is that I'm really trying to force my way in rather than playing patient um, and just using my normals to get in. Uh, something you can do with any character you play, including Mika. Uh, jumping too much just makes you predictable and you can actually get anti-air pretty heavily, so i got to stop doing that. Right now, I think I realized that during this match, and I'm like, okay, let me just stop jumping. But by this time, it's a little too late. Uh, he was able to get me in stun, and that was the end of that match. So, I got KO with one bar and four V-Trigger, which I didn't get to use. Alright, so round two, let's see how things change. I'm actually trying to do Passion Press now in neutral to catch any uh, straight normal he throws out and uh, punish it, but it's probably not the best idea. I jumped again and did a roundhouse. That's not terribly bad. I got away with that slide. Now, the problem I'm going to have later on is that slide of hers. I use it way too much. Oh, okay, so we got... There we go. I was able to get the media press, but then I didn't do anything off of it, and that's a big problem with me is execution because I actually had that there, and I could have got a lot more damage. I'm going to get lucky, though, because he's not keeping me off of him uh, since Nash doesn't have a great reversal option so I'm able to just keep the pressure up, get a stun. I was supposed to go into super right there, I'm not super, uh, EX Peach right there and I just for some reason didn't cancel. I'm pretty sure I did the motion but uh, no me, just execution wise again it dropped so <laughs> um, right now just trying to get a uh, good spacing. I actually did okay on that jumping because I jumped without putting my uh, extending my hitbox uh, too far, so I was okay there, but still, still gotta be careful with that. So far, I haven't jumped again, so I'm just staying on the ground. Uh, but I jumped again, I got fortunate there that uh, he threw out a boom, so that's okay. I got another slide that was a very bad EX Peach, and I was very fortunate that he didn't have a punish ready because any other time that was any other character, that had been my life. Um, that's another problem I have is I kind of guess Peach sometimes, I really shouldn't. But here is just general Mika play, so I get the EX grab, he's stunned, and all I gotta do is just do a jump around. So that one went. Fairly smooth in my favor. It was very loose, and I actually could tell that I got away with some things that I won't be able to get away against uh, his better characters. As you will see in a second here, because the next match is going to be 
against his Karin, and Karin can just pretty much keep me out with standing medium pick all day. So I'm gonna figure a way around that, and I'm trying not to jump. Like this is my challenge when I play Mika. Like do not jump often, don't spam drop kicks often. Use everything else she has to get in. So that way, if I do have to resort to jumping, I know I have other options when I get on the ground again, and I'm not just forced into that only option. Also, my anti airing during this time frame is really bad with Mika. So this is again, this is not first playing her. So I still wasn't used to doing crotch medium punch to uh, anti air, but. LW doesn't jump very much at all anyway, so it became more difficult to spot it, which is good. That's a great thing. And so now I'm trying to, I've made my way in. I think I'm going to, uh, I'll keep doing towards Fierce to uh, try and punish any normal he puts out because I'm not quite sure when he's going to put out a jab or a uh, medium kick. If he does medium kick, it's not much I can do about it. going to push me back. But if he does like a jab or like a cross medium punch, I should be able to get a counter hit on that. That was a good anti-air, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> I'll keep forgetting that her uh, Fierce is a good anti-air, too, so I gotta remember to use that. Um, right now, just using forward medium kick to uh, stay out of her optimal range, be able to put some damage in push towards the corner. I don't want her out of this corner, but he does get a crush counter, and then goes ahead and uh, he drops the end, though, which surprises me. I was able to get that EXP there as a punish, and then I actually called in uh, the Deshko from the top, so I got fortunate there, actually. Because had he blocked and not jumped, it would have been a waste of V trigger. So he, but he jumped, and I did not do that on reaction. That was pre-planned. So lucky me on that in that situation. But I probably should have done it until I got some kind of normal hit and then confirmed it into that rather than just trying to get it. Because I think sometimes my mindset is still that chip damage kills in this game, which it doesn't with it's super. So I have to remember that if I'm going for those kind of setups, it's got to be something that I'll get a hit off of. Now right there, I'm able to go ahead and get the uh, brimstone. I'm trying to push to the corner again, but uh, he does do a neutral jump, and I have to block it. I should have anti-aired him though. Uh, and now he's on the rampage, and uh, I've got to be careful. I did a oh, 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 oh. I know what he was thinking there, and I should have thought about that myself, which is that after drop kick, I'm plus. He knows I'm plus. So he knows I want to press the button because he knows that he did ex, uh, his ex reversal or ex anti-air, whichever one you want to call it. It's the same thing in this case. Um, and so, therefore, I ate that because I was pressing buttons and I should have been. Um, I probably should have just waited to see if he would do something, but there was no guarantee of that. But at the very least, if I waited and he did nothing, I'd have been fine still. I got that drop kick and I did not have a really good punish ready because I don't know why I didn't have a punish ready. Just, I guess that was more or less, I wasn't used to the idea of punishing off of that just yet. So, and now I get drop kicked back. Oh, he mixed me up, but he threw me out of the corner, so I'm lucky in this sense. Now, if I can get a, uh, a view reversal, I might be able to reverse things here. I did a bad slide there, but I got fortunate I wasn't in range. Oh, that was a punish, and that should have been super. That might have ended the match almost, at least put him in a very bad spot. But instead, I dropped it, and now pressure turned back on me. So a lot of my problem that I'm noticing in these two matches so far, which is usually the case with me, is execution. Execution is a huge problem of mine. I'm still working on it to this day. I've had it since I don't know when. Uh, and the Deshko call was not the greatest, but... And then the same thing as last time, and I didn't learn, which is that when I do that drop kick, He's expecting me to press a button because he knows that I'm plus, I know that I'm plus, so I'm going to press something. And I shouldn't. I should just wait and bait it. Like, even if I just, like, stand up for, like, a quick second and sit back down and make him think. So, that's against another player. From a, This is from a, another set, and this is an Octo Taco. And now I'm playing Cammy, so it's a different mindset here. Uh, Cammy I'm much more familiar with, so I should have my punishes down, but I'll probably still drop a thing here and there because execution. <laughs> so... Um, I've gotten much more comfortable playing her though than when I was uh, when I first started playing Street Fighter Five, which makes sense. Um, there he did a DP, so now I know I have it in my head he's gonna do DPs. Uh, so I have to keep that in mind whenever I go in for anything to make sure that my combos are tight. I'm not sure if he's actually trying to play footsies or just throwing out normals, so I'm just kind of being patient and waiting at this point to see what he does. Even if I lose this first round, I'm just gathering. Okay, he likes to throw there. He likes to do DPs. He's gonna come in, do, you know, just getting that information. So now that I have that information, what do I do with it? Let's find out. Okay, so I remember that I was safe on that whenever I do a, I have to remember to use that tool more often, uh, Axel Spin Knuckle, because back in a Cross Tekken and Street Fighter 4, it wasn't all that useful except for very specific situations, but in this game, it's actually quite useful since you can combo off of it, so uh, punishing fireballs with it is very good, and keep that in mind. I did get a punish there, and I was able to, you know, start my pressure up. I got it again, and there you go, I comboed off of it and pushed him further to the corner. I'm waiting for a DP, but he's not DPing, actually, but then I DP him instead for jumping in. Now, this is one thing I love about Kim is that a lot of characters that um, usually can get away with doing sweeps and like uh, 
you know, not being punished for it. Can't do that with Kimmy. In most cases, I think Karen's the only one I can think of. Her sweep is like, I can't get to it. Or maybe Vegas. No. Vegas has a slot. Uh, I can't remember. I know for sure, like, even Karen, sometimes if they misspace it, like, even slightly, I can punish it. So, it's very fun playing Kimmy in those situations. There, he went for... Uh, crotch medium punch on wake up, not sure why, but I was able to, I did a jump anyway, so I was able to punish it. He's stunned, and it should be pretty easy, but I drop it because that's what I do. I drop things. <laughs> um, it's not even a hard link either, so again, that's just more practice, but he jumped again, so I was able to DP, and that was uh, pretty solid on my part. So I think the next match that I have coming up is going to be versus uh, Ryu Bahamut, aka Don Long, aka my training partner. And he's using uh, Nikali now. He used to use uh, Geef, but he switched over to Geef and Fang, actually. Um, but he switched over to Nikali as his main. I think he has Geef as a backup. Uh, so it's really good for, in my, for me because I get to learn both those matchups now and uh, get good practice on them. So I'm fine with it. I enjoy with my uh, my training partners and my friends and different characters where they switch up because it gives me more people to train against. And uh, yeah, he's got the neon pink color. It's pretty cool. So now I'm going to try and out poke him as much as I can. But uh, in this match, I think this match actually went pretty terrible, which is why I put it here. Um, I have a new thing I like to do, which is crouch fierce into a V trigger. I don't have it quite yet, but you'll notice it. I guess you could say it's part of my playing style. And that's that I will start fishing for it. Uh, as soon as I see that V trigger or V meter get very high, I start fishing for crouch fierce a lot more. Um, I got to figure out ways to make it less obvious. That's supposed to be a dive kick. And that's a big problem I have when I play Cami is like, I've lost so many matches because of messed up dive kick inputs. I really got to work on getting that tightened up. He just dashed in and just threw me, but I woke up and then saw he was going to do an overhead, so I DP'd. Uh, and so far, it's not going terrible. It's pretty even. I'm still actually in the lead, so as long as I don't go crazy here, that's supposed to be a dive kick. Um, I should be all right. Now, I'm going to try and bait a DP, but he does not fall for it. And now I'm in the corner because I like to go for cross up like this. That's another problem I have is if I'm in the corner and I, you know, my first attempt to regain pressure fails, I will do a jump like uh, jump cross up like kick, and that's not great. I need to stop doing that as well. There, I knew he's gonna go for a grab. Uh, he's gonna dash in and grab on wake up, so I just neutral jumped because I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna punish this. Uh, he didn't do anything necessarily to give it away. I just know that like the Kali players. Or players with uh, grabs in general like to do that on your wake up when they know you're having the corner because you're going to panic and not want to do a DP or anything. Um, so I'm like, well, I'm just going to neutral jump this and punish it. So I actually had a good read on that one. And we're back to neutral now. And uh, yep, that was actually a good dive kick. Or uh, not a good dive kick, but I actually did that one right, but it was at the wrong time. He jumped as well, so he got above me. And uh, I want to throw him towards the corner, but I think I just messed up the inputs. So I ended up throwing him forwards. I'm going to do the same thing here again. Now, I'm expecting that he's not going to do anything uh, too crazy. I'm going to just keep anti-airing him and uh, keep the gameplay solid. I don't want to overextend myself. Let's see if I do so here. I'm just looking for a crouch fierce now. I'm either looking for a crouch fierce or a fierce that I can hit, throw out there. I'm throwing out fierce and I'm buffering uh, cannon drill. I'm actually not doing too good at that because you'll see a couple of those fierces hit and nothing comes out. That's supposed to be a drill after that. To punish like a long one like that. But in any case, um, and now he's just out poking me. This is the part of the Nikali matchup I hate, because now anything he can, like, hits me with, he can cancel into uh, damage. And I just, that was just bad. Oh, that was bad. That was one of those moments where I thought it was going to hit, and I just knew I had a guarantee hit. So I didn't even try to hit confirm it. I just buffered a drill into the crouching medium kick when I landed, and I got punished for it because I did it on his block rather than it actually hitting. So that's another thing. I had to make sure I erased from my game. Well, I won't say erase because sometimes you have to go for those, you know, those moments. Where it's like I know I'm gonna get this, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do it. But uh, so you gotta be very rare. You got, you have to be really confident. Had I hit it, I would have been brilliant, but I didn't, so I am a scrub. Anyway, um, and now I'm getting out fussy, and uh, I shouldn't be necessarily because uh, that was supposed to be a super, by the way. That DP, I'd been trying to make him commit to throwing out a. Uh, a quake for the longest time so I could super like even now I'm trying to do it and I use the wrong button that's frustrating because I actually should have used feet or not fierce but a roundhouse to do that and I used uh I used middle or medium kick to do that and it uh did not reach far enough so I didn't punish I landed right in front of him which is terrible and it put me in a bad position with no meter I do still have v triggers so I can make something work 
I messed up that punish. That should have been a uh, crush counter. So I'm just messing up a bunch of stuff in a row now. Because now I'm just frightened and I don't want to lose. And uh, I do get a knockdown there with the drill, but I didn't capitalize on it. No meaty setup. And now he's overheading me. I get that. I do the uh, jabs confirmed in the drill, so that's pretty good. I should have confirmed something in the V-Trigger. But then I made a really bad jump. That was just a terrible jump. I'm not sure why I thought I should jump there. I'm thinking because of the fact that he was um, pacing back and forth. So it made me antsy. And that's why I jumped. Because I thought I had a chance to get in and get a uh, get at least a free hit on block. So I could put more pressure on. So a few things that I need to work on. Obviously throughout all the matches. The biggest thing that came up that I saw was uh, execution problems. Because a lot of that stuff. If I had actually had tightened execution. Would not have been a problem. It would have hit and I've been a OK. But I didn't, so a lot of things dropped, and I left a lot of damage on the table, which gave my opponent second chances. Um, that's been a reoccurring thing for me for a long time, and I think that's something I really have to keep working on constantly. Uh, I've gotten better, at least in Street Fighter V, I've gotten better. Um, but it's going to take me some time, I'm still getting used to the system, and uh, how Street Fighter V feels compared to other Street Fighter games. So, there's going to be that adjustment period. I'm getting a lot, I've improved a lot, though, even since this video. Like, I'm recording this uh, probably about a week and a half after I've actually played these matches, maybe even two weeks. So I've improved quite a bit, and they'll, hopefully that'll come through in the videos that are coming up. But for this time period, it's still somebody to work on. This is somebody to work on constantly is my execution to making sure that when things hit, I get the maximum punish. Um, the other thing I gotta work on is just making better decisions under pressure. Uh, when I get cornered, or when I like lose control of the match, I have a tendency to just either do one or two things. Either I completely freeze up and just sit and block and don't do anything to get them off me and show them I'm a threat. Or I go completely insane and I do DPs everywhere out of one wake up and it's just I get punished for that. Um, I didn't do the wake up DPs in this set. This set it was more like okay I'm in danger. Let me do the safest, like easiest jab confirms I can do and just you know block all day and let them pressure me. Uh, can't do that. That will get you killed. <laughs> you got to be able to, especially in this game, you have to be able to risk or want to risk things. And I need to use reversal a bit more as well. I'm getting better about it now, but it's going to take some time to adjust to that. So, next time I will be going over Bison matches I've had in particular because that matchup just eludes me. I'm not sure what to do. Anyhow, thank you for watching this. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, look forward to the next one. If you have any uh, advice for me, feel free to share it. Thank you, and I'll holler at you later.